Okay, this is the M1 paper from October 2023. It's question number five, and if you look at it in detail, we'll see this is a statics question, a quite important statics question where we've got a ring here threaded onto a rod. They're always quite difficult in terms of working out where all the forces are and also which way the ring's going to move, where, which way friction going to uh, go, and it, that can be variable. So let, let's have a look at it. It says we've got this small ring, mass 0.2. It's threaded onto this uh, fixed rough rod. Tan theta equals 12 over 5. I'm trying to work out my theta. And it says, given that the ring is in equilibrium and the tension in the string is 10, right? Okay, so I've got all that information. Can we find the magnitude of the frictional force and can we state the direction of the frictional force? And although that they've said this part second, I really need to focus on that bit first. Um, before I can work out what I'm going to do with this information. And before I do any of it, let's just focus on this tan theta equals 12 over 5, because they do that quite often. So part A, when they tell me that tan theta is equal to 12 over 5, what they're then saying is that theta can be represented in this diagram here as opposite over adjacent there. And if that's true, using Pythagoras, we can work out that the hypotenuse would be 13. Quite often they use um, triangles they expect us to know, the 5, 12, 13 triangle, just like the 3, 4, 5, and the 7, 24, 25. You should know those ones, really. Uh, but what that means, then, is that from that I can see what sine theta is and I can see what cos theta is. Sine theta is opposite over hypotenuse, so 12 over 13, and cos theta is adjacent over hypotenuse which is 5 over 13. Right, so that's fine, but now let's have a think about what's going on in terms of this ring. So what I've done is I've put it down here just so I can talk about what's going to be going on. We know we've got this tension in the string of 10 here, so just give me two seconds to resolve that. We'll explain why we're going to do that in a second, but this should not be a problem to you. That If that's 10, I'm going to put theta there, so then I'm going to have 10 sine theta and 10 cos theta being those two resolved parts. Normally, I might actually draw my triangle in that direction, but that line there is going to be busy with all sorts of other forces, so it's just simpler to do that. If we have a situation, now let's think about this, this bead here. If we've got a situation where this bead is on this um, rod then, then that means that there is contact, and if there is contact, we always know that for any of our mechanics questions where we get contact, we would have a normal reaction force, and that's going in that direction there. If you want to spend time looking at that, this isn't the time of this video, you just have to accept it with regards to that one. More importantly, because I'm going to now look at where the friction's going, let's put my mass, uh, sorry, my weight on, because we know that shouldn't be causing me any problems. The weight acting there is 0.2 g. But which way is the friction going? Well, friction will oppose motion. So if friction opposes motion, what I need to do is to work out, is this, if, if it would move, it's not going to move, but if it would move, is it being dragged up by that 10 cos theta there? Or the other possibility is that the 0.2g is bigger, and so it's going to be dragged down by the weight of itself. So what we need to determine with regards to which way this friction is going is 0.2 g or 10 cos theta, which is bigger. So in this particular instance, 10 cos theta is 10 lots of 5 over 13. That does work out to be bigger than 0.2 g, which is 0.2 times 9.8. So if it were moving... It's not, but if it were moving, it would be moving in that direction. Friction opposes motion, so my frictional force is going to be going in that direction. Now I've got that, I can now um, actually work out what that frictional force will be because we're in equilibrium here. So if we say resolve vertically, F equals MA, but we're statics, it's not moving anything. So what it means is that the 10 cos theta and the F plus 0.2g will cancel each other out. So if that's true, F is equal to 10 cos theta minus 0.2g. And then remember, 
we said that cos theta was 5 over 3, so 10 lots of, oh, sorry, 5 over 13, 5 over 13 minus 0.2g. So f works out to be whatever that calculation comes to. 1.89, or rather, let's do it to two significant figures. Got g in our question, so 1.9 newtons. And part b, which asks about which direction it's acting in, I've already talked about that. So friction acts, in this case, downwards. It hasn't asked for any sort of description, so that's fine. I could just put that it opposes potential motion. Okay, so what do we do for part C? For part C now, it says, okay, we're going to give you a slightly different situation. We're going to tell you the coefficient of friction. We're going to say T is variable now, or not variable, but T is a different value now. T newtons, and what they're going to do is say, if the ring's in equilibrium, tell me the different values, the maximum value and the minimum value that T can be. So again, we need to just have a little bit of a thought process to this and an argument as to what's going on. Um, probably not got space there. Let's do the diagram again here. So all I'm going to do is redraw it out, but um, just having T rather than 10 as my force so we have the same situation we've got this ring i know i've got a reaction force going in that direction i know the weight of this ring is 0.2 g i know that this force here is going to be t rather than 10 but that still means that i'll have these two forces this is still theta so i'm going to have t sine theta here and I'm going to have T cos theta here. So again, what, what happens in terms of this force? Well, imagine that T is the biggest it can possibly be. If T is the biggest it can possibly be, what will happen is we'll be on the point of dragging this thing up, but it won't be able to. So if T is its maximum, what will happen is we will have friction acting in the opposite direction there. So we're going to have friction acting there. I can then go through and work out all my values for that. Then what we can do is say, okay, let's keep our T in this direction. But if T is way, way less, and it's just about enough to actually keep the object from going down this time, okay, so if it's just about good enough to keep the object from going down, then what will happen is friction will now be acting in this direction because the potential is for the object to be moving down. And in that situation, friction has then flipped over and we can work out our tension for that. So we've got those two different scenarios to play out. And all I'm gonna do, I won't draw out a new diagram for each one of them, uh, we'll just go through and do all the working out and then we'll simply flip the uh, friction round for the second part when we're doing it. So let's do the part where we're looking for the maximum. So if we're looking for the maximum, friction is going to be going in that direction because if there was any movement, it would be upwards. It would be on the point of being able to drag this thing up. So as we do this now, let's do um, our standard work that we would go through. So if I resolve horizontally, first of all, I'm going to get the T sine theta, or F equals MA, but I'm going to get that R simply equals to T sine theta. So T sine theta is 12T over 13. So when I said about going through our usual stuff, uh, what we always do, resolve. Now let's do F equals mu R as the second part to work out what F is. So F is going to be, what was mu? Mu was naught point, no, mu was a quarter, sorry. A quarter, lots of 12T over 13. So F is going to work out to be 3T over 13. So that would be true no matter which way the object was moving. But I'm now going to see, uh, for maximum T,
for maximum t, uh, should I say, yeah, t is on the point of moving upwards. So therefore my diagram is correct at the moment, friction will be going in that direction. So resolve vertically and what we're going to get is F plus 0.2 G is equal to T cos theta. We've got our F as being 3T over 13 plus 0.2 G is equal to T cos theta, but T cos theta then is 5T over 13. And then we can just rearrange all this to get what T works out to be. We'll get 2T over 13 is equal to 0.2 G, which means that T works out to be equal to 12.7 or rather 13 Newtons. For the minimum T, T is on the point of moving downwards. T is on point of moving downwards this time. So when we resolve this time, what happens is this would not be right now. Now I'm going to leave it in there for the first part, but for the second part, what we're saying now is that friction would be going in, oh sorry, the resistance, yeah, friction would be going in the opposite direction. But I'm not going to leave that on there because I don't need to confuse the examiner. Uh, I'd be perfectly happy from what I've done so far. So there's the situation then. We get T cos, what did we have last time? So we had F plus 0.2G. This time we're going to have 0.2G minus F is going to be equal to T cos theta. And then we can just go through from that and work out all the other parts. So we're gonna get F is equal to 0.2G minus t cos theta, which was 5t over 13. We had the same, um, where has it gone? I was lost there. <laughs> the same 3t over 13, so we're going to get, uh, hang on, which way around have I got that? Yeah, yeah, so we're going to say, sorry, just bear with me a second, let me just confuse myself there. F was equal to 3t over 13, so we're going to get 0.2g minus 3t over 13, that's better, is equal to 5t over 13. Confused at the very, very end there. So this time we'll get 0.2g is equal to 8t over 13, and that gives us, rearrange it all, t works out to be equal to 3.19 or 3.2 newtons in that case. So absolutely makes sense that the smaller value there because um, that was the minimum and the other one was the maximum. Right, a lot of information there, a lot of complicated um, thought processes. You might need to go through that video a few times, but hopefully eventually it will make sense to you.